Miller is part of a group of married friends with kids, secular but respectful of religion. In May, they all decide to organize a big gathering in Hayarkon Park in Tel Aviv. While the kids are playing, the bigger kids are bicycling, and while the women are talking, the men are preparing a barbecue. Next to them is a religious man who plays ball with a little boy. At a certain point, Tomer goes to get pitas in the car located in the parking lot. He comes back very angry. There's a motorcycle next to the door. I couldn't open it. Tomer is the natural leader of the group. He's a big guy, muscular, who loses his temper quite easily. He's a good heart until he gets angry. And this motorcycle got him angry. He starts screaming, who does this motorcycle belong to? As if one of the thousands of visitors would know who he's talking to. To his great surprise, the man with the young child playing next to him answers, you talking about the Hatsala bike, the first aid bike? Yes, with that big trunk in the back, red and white. Why, it's yours, asked Tomer. Yes, it's mine. I'll get it out of the way right now. The young man tells him, why are you talking to me like this? Speak gently. Speak gently, you said. I'm going to break your neck. No, I'm not talking to you anymore. Get your bike out of the way before I squash you. The young man looks at him with a sad demeanor and asks him, would you want to be spoken like that in front of your child? Tomer comes closer to him with a threatening look. He wants to hit him, but his friends stop him and speak to the young father. Let it go. Just move the motorcycle. Don't start up. It's not worth it. His friends were ashamed by Tomer's behavior. Why did he need to humiliate him like that? He could have passed by the other side of the car and get the pitas, but Tomer was their friend and they kept quiet. The young man came back to play with his son after moving the bike. Suddenly, screams can be heard. Chagid fell from the ladder. Chagid is six years old. She's Tomer's daughter. She was playing with the other kids on the ladder when she suddenly fell down and the children started screaming. Parents ran towards her, surrounding her little body lying on the ground. She's not breathing. Tomer reaches out for his daughter and he starts screaming, Chagid, Chagid, wake up, help, please. Call an ambulance. The screams can be heard in the entire park. Several people witness this terrible situation without being able to help out. And amongst the chaos, we hear the siren of an ambulance. Everyone's wondering, how could an ambulance have come so fast, even before someone had called? The siren actually came from that red motorcycle with the trunk in the back. On his bike, it said Yichud Hatzalah. The young rescuer gets off his bike and full speed opens up the trunk, takes out a few objects and runs towards the young girl. This is so strange, Tomer is the big strong man trembling like a young girl, while the delicate young man suddenly becomes the leader of the events going on. He gives instruction to all those around him, take this, give me this, go run to the bike, get that blue package, rip it off, but gently. At the same time, he speaks into his walkie-talkie, bringing in an ambulance, fall on the head, loss of consciousness. Everyone stares at him like an angel and a rescuer. He maintains his calm and acts with expertise. And after a minute, Hagit, who until now is unconscious, starts to move and cough. He manages to stabilize her and the women are weeping and the men are crying. And the young man stays focused. He keeps on watching the young girl speaking to the center. A few minutes later, which seems like forever, a stretcher arrives and the rescuer with two other men carrying the little girl to the ambulance. Tomer goes towards the young man and says, I'm so sorry, please accept my apologies and cries endlessly. The young man answers, we don't have time, get in the ambulance, everything will be fine. And the ambulance disappears with the howls of sirens down the street. All of Tomer's friends reach out to him, taking him in his arms, kissing him, asking him for forgiveness. The young man was overwhelmed by the amount of affection and kisses that he was getting. They're all moved by the rare event which had just occurred. They took his phone number and to stay in touch and met their friend at the hospital. Chagid is no longer in a life-threatening situation. Tomer is broken and sad. He's so ashamed how he acted towards this man who ended up saving his daughter's life. The next day he calls him and he begs for forgiveness and he cries, I'd like to compensate you. Please tell me how much you would like. The young man says in a soft voice, it's okay, I forgive you. By the same token, he tries to diminish his role in the event. We at Yichud Hatzalah, we do these things all the time. This is our salary. We don't take a dime from anybody. Tomer insists and he says, no, I really, I must give you something. The man says, no, we don't take money, but if you'd like, you could make a donation to Hatzalah. Chagit gets out of the hospital three days later, but Tomer is not appeased. He is greatly disturbed. He says that he wants to organize a big Suda Soda with the celebration and thanks and invite the young man to be the guest of honor. He sets up a date one week later on Motzei Shabbos and asks the young man to attend. He promises to make a donation to Yichud Hatzalah to show his gratitude. The young man accepts. The story could end here, but this is not the case. No one can fathom what happens next. 
on Thursday evening, the 23rd of ER, two days before the celebration, at three o'clock in the morning, the young Eli Gadassi was called in for medical emergency. On the way, while driving on Menachem Ben Yisrael Street, the taxi driver hits him full force. Effie dies on the spot. Eli Gadassi is a volunteer at Yichud Hatzalah, and he saved Chagit's life. Tomar and all his friends were present at the Arakon Park that day, came to the funeral. They were so ashamed. That day changed their lives. They were crying like babies. They were helping Tomer stand because he was on the verge of fainting. It's impossible to describe the sadness and his feelings of guilt. Although Eli had forgiven him, he was under the impression that part of his heart was broken. Everyone got stronger in their Judaism and Tomer more than everyone. He started to wear a large kippah and to pray every day and respect Shabbat. All of this in Elfi's memory. Tomer organized a big fundraiser among all his friends to buy Yichur Atzala a bike. This is the story of Efi Gadasi, one of the hundreds of volunteers of Yichud Hatzala who is fulfilling a very holy mission, without waiting for anything in return. As this story shows, this holy mission is done at the expense of great discomfort, lack of sleep, and even injuries, and lack of respect. This year, may we try to judge our fellow favorably, and we will make efforts to contribute to the elevation of the soul of Eli Gadasi. Shabbat Shalom.